Gateway Load Balancing Protocol, GLBP, built this topology. Between DLS1 and DLS2, between DLS1 and ALS1, facet net 1 and 2 on both sides. Okay, I will use gigabit 01 and 02. Between DLS2 and ALS1, facet Ethernet 1 and 2 on DLS2 side, and facet Ethernet 3 and 4 on ALS1 side. Okay, I will use uh, one gigabit one connected to three and gigabit two connected to one zero. Between DLS1 and DLS2, facet Ethernet 3 and 4. I will use uh, 3 gigabit 3 and gigabit 10. This PC is connected to facet Ethernet 6. Okay. I will connect to gigabit one two. And the other PCs, PCB and PCC connected to facet internet eighteen on both cases. 18. I would use gigabit 2, 3. Connection to routers for Ethernet 5 on DLS 1 and on DLS 2. For Ethernet 5 connected to for Ethernet 1. In my case, I will connect fast, uh, gigabit 11 to gigabit 01 and gigabit 11 to gigabit 01. The connection between R1 and R2, CL0, 
on both sides and the connection to between R2 and R3 serial 1 on both sides I will use gigabit 0 2 between R1 and R2 and gigabit 0 2 to 0 1 between R2 and R3 double click, double click, double click Don't forget this table down here, DLS1, the management IP address, Gen1993, and the default gateway 254, DLS24, the default gateway 254, and ALS15, the default gateway 254. Okay, go to configuration and build initial two configurations and build initial configurations to create the usernames and passwords on the Linux containers okay otherwise it's not possible to access these devices build initial configurations see router configuration now um, Open Auto Net Kit now. Okay, and start the simulation. Launch simulation.
Also, HSRP and BRRP provide gateway resiliency for standby members of the redundancy group. The upstream bad byte is not used while the device is in standby mode. Only the active router for HSRP and the master for BRRP groups forward traffic for the virtual MAC. Resources associated with the standby router are not fully utilized. Some load balancing can be accomplished with these protocols through the creation of multiple groups and through the assignments of multiple default gateways. But this configuration creates an administrative burden. Previous labs provide you with experience configuring HSRP and BRRP to add first hop redundancy protocols. Gateway Load Balancing Protocol GLBP performs a similar function in redundancy but offers the capability to load balance over multiple gateways. GLBP is a Cisco proprietary solution created to enable automatic selection and simultaneous use of multiple available gateways in addition to automatic failover between those gateways. Multiple routers share the load. Uh, frames that, from a client perspective, are sent to a single default gateway address. Like HSRP and BRRP, an election occurs, but rather than a single active router within the election, GLBP elects an active virtual gateway, ABG. The ABG assigns virtual MAC address to each of the routers in the GLBP group, called active virtual forwarders or ABFs. These virtual MAC addresses are then provided to host algorithmic manner in response to ARP requests from hosts for the default gateway. GLBP allows for simultaneous forwarding from routers participating in a GLBP group. GLBP can support up to four routers in a group. GLBP also offers authentication and object tracking. Required resources for a real lab and prepare for the lab. Execute the reset.tcl script on the TCL shell to erase the contents of the devices. Also, you can copy the contents of base.cfg file to running configuration to apply basic settings. Okay, this is the script uh, for to apply the basic settings, the script for the base.cfg file uh, to configure the basic settings. These are the commands uh, for that script. This is uh, the erase the contents to for a layer three switch. This is the script, and these are the commands. And this is the uh, script to erase the contents on layer two switch. This is the script, and these are the commands. I'm using BIRL, so to erase a device is uh, is different. Okay. Okay. First of all, on BIRL, open the consoles R1, R2, R3, DLS1. DLS2 and ALS1, the console for routers and switches. For example, go, go to R1, enter, enable, and the password by default is Cisco and show running config. Okay, it has previous configurations, interfaces with IP addresses. Routing configurations and another configurations. So to apply the erase stuff config is not enough for this device. Uh, 
for example, show flash uh, zero column. This is the boot directory space 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 space. And you have the MVRAM, okay, and delete this, okay, delete flash zero column MVRAM, confirm, confirm, enter, enter, and also show flash three column, also delete this this file that was created with the built initial configuration okay um, also remove this delete, delete flash 3 and the name of the file ios config.txt enter 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 uh, and ready and then reload the router and the router okay would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog yes or no? This message means that this device doesn't have configurations and is completely erased. Now Okay, enter, enable, no password. The device name is rather by default and show running config. Okay, uh, no configurations, no IP addresses. Okay, this is very good to start the lab. For example, on our switch DLS1, for example, uh, enable the password is Cisco uh, show running config okay it has previous configurations okay previous configurations IP address and uh, use the same process the let flash zero and run and enter, enter enter and the light flash three iOS config that txt enter 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 then reload enter 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 Enter, enable, no password, show running config. Okay, no configurations. Very nice.
Okay, the device name by default switch and do this on all devices. Enable Cisco Okay Copy Enter and paste here Okay, then reload. Enter, enter, enter. Reload. Add some bl blank lines to simulate the enter key. R3, enter, enable, Cisco, paste. DLS2, enter, enable, Cisco, paste. ALS1, enter, enable, Cisco, Paste. Okay. Okay, DLS one. Configure. Okay, now devices are empty. R one, R two, R three, DLS one, DLS two, ALS one. But apply the basic settings, apply these commands. This is for a switch. But for router, for router, can be something like IP domain, no IP domain lookup, or interfaces on a router are disabled by default, so it's not necessary to disable interfaces. No BTP and line console zero, no exit timeout, no use synchronous, and then apply the host name. Apply these basic uh, configurations on routers. R1, uh, configure terminal, paste, and the host name is R1, R2, no, R3, no. Okay, in R2, enable, configure, terminal, paste, hostname, R2, R3, enter, enable, configure, terminal, paste, hostname, R3, DLS1. For switches, apply these basic settings, the domain, no IP domain lookup, Shut down all interfaces, all this range, gigabit 00 to 03, from 10 to 13, and from 20 to 23. Double click on a switch and verify all the interfaces. You need to disable these interfaces by the far uh, on the basic settings. 
shut down the interfaces, the BTP mode transparent, line console configurations, then the host name. Okay, DLS1, configure terminal, paste, DLS1, enter, enter, enable, configure, terminal, enter, uh, paste, Hostname DLS2 DLS2 DLS1 Enter Enable Configure Terminal Paste DLS1 Enter Okay DLS1 Enter Ready Configure basic switch parameters, configure IP address and the management VLAN according to the diagram. VLAN 1 is the default management VLAN, but the following best practice we will use a different VLAN. In this lab, VLAN 99 will be used as the management VLAN. VLAN 99 and configure DLS 1 with the IP address 99.3, DLS 2 99.4, ALS 1 99.5. Okay, DLS1, interface, VLAN 99, IP address. Okay, this, uh, this management VLAN 99, 10.1.99.0. Okay, uh, 10.1.99. In this case, uh, DLS1 is 3. So, let mask 24, enter. Not shut down. Exit. Additionally, you can configure the default gateway. The default gateway will be 10199254. Okay, DLS1 and DLS2 interface VLAN 99 VLAN 99 IP address 101994 uh, DLS2 is 4 Subnet mask shut down exit IP default Gateway 254. ALS1 will be 5. VLAN 99. IP address 101995. Subnet mask. The shutdown. Exit. IP default. Gateway. 10199254. Okay, and uh, this is the example. Configure the IP on the interface and then not shut down. Passwords are optional. Configure trunks and other channels between switches. Okay, configure. This, uh, as previous labs, the interface range, the encapsulation trunk, uh, by default, the tip is VLAN 1, and the channel group, okay, this, uh, for example, channel group 1, Channel group 2 and channel group 10. Okay, all those configurations. Okay, between DLS1 and ALS1, use 
these two interfaces, Gigabit 01 and Gigabit 02 on both sides. Okay, go to DLS1, interface rate, Gigabit 01 and 2, switch port, trunk, encapsulation, that one Q, uh, switch port, mode trunk, by default, native VLAN 1, channel, group, one mode active for LACP. Then no shut down. Go to ALS one. The same configuration. One and two encapsulation switch port trunk encapsulation that one Q mode trunk and channel group uh, number one mode active no shutdown between the ls1 and the ls2 gigabit 0 3 and 1 0 and the Port channel number 10, DLS1 and gigabit 0, 03 and gigabit 10. Encapsulation mode channel group 10. No shutdown. DLS2 interface range gigabit 0, 03, gigabit 10. Switch port trunk encapsulation that one Q. Switch port mode trunk channel. Group number 10, mode active. No shutdown. Okay, between DLS2 and ALS1. Okay, and this port channel number two on DLS2 gigabit one zero, uh, sorry, gigabit zero one and zero two. Okay, on DLS2 <laughs> interface range gigabit zero one and zero two. The encapsulation the trunk the port channel number two then no shutdown and go to ALS1 on this side the interfaces are gigabit 0, 03 and 10 interface range 0, 03 and gigabit 10. Encapsulation, the mode, the channel group number 2, no shutdown. You can verify on ALS1 do show at the channel summary. Okay, do show at the channel summary. Okay, um, layer 2 in use, all is working very well. And bundled in our port channel. Port channel 1 and port channel 2. 1 and 2. For example, on DLS1, verify, do show better channel summary. Okay, 1 and 10, layer 2 in use, 
bundle and a port channel. Okay. As uh, uppercase layer two, you in, in use bundle in a port channel. Very nice. Now, configure BTP client mode on DLS2 and ALS1, BTP mode client. Okay. So, DLS2 and ALS1 clients, DLS1 server. Go to DLS2, BTP mode client, enter uh, ALS1, BTP mode client, enter, enter. Okay, now configure DLS1 as the server. Here, the domain, the version, and the mode. DLS1, BTP mode server, BTP domain, uh, GLBP, BTP version 2. Now on DLS1 create the VLANs 99 management 10 office 20 server. VLAN 10 name office VLAN 20 name server VLAN 99 name management. Now verify VLANs propagate propagation. For, for example, go to DLS2, do show VLAN brief. Okay, uh, VLAN 10 and 20. On ALS1, do show VLAN brief. Okay, only 10 and 20. Okay, go to DLS1 and show VLAN brief. This is the server, VLAN 10, 20, and 99. Okay, and go to DLS2, the show VLAN brief. Okay, now three VLANs are propagated. Okay, verify also do show uh, BTP, sorry, BTP status. Okay, the domain name GLBP version 2. Uh, ALS1, the show VLAN brief. Okay, now you have the three VLANs. Okay. If BTP is not synchronized, maybe you need to apply the BTP uh, domain GLBP on clients to have the same domain and synchronize the VLANs. Okay. Configure switch access ports. Okay. As the diagram illustrates, there are PCs connected to DLS1, Facet Ethernet 6, DLS2, 18, ALS1, 18, all PCs connected to the lab topology will statically access VLAN 10. Additional configure spanning tree port fast on these switch ports. Okay. This is that sample. In my case, on DLS1, PC is connected to GOB12, DLS1, Interf configure terminal interface GOB12, switch port mode access, switch port access VLAN 10, and spanning 3 port fast. No shutdown. 
DLS2 connected to gigabit 2.3 interface gigabit 2.3 switch board more access switch board access VLAN 10 spanning 3 port fast no shutdown ALS1 ALS1 gigabit 2.3 the like gigabit 2.3 um, switch port access switch port access VLAN 10 spanning 3 port fast no shutdown Configure DLS1 and DLS2 trunk into the R1 and R3 router. Configure DLS1 and DLS2 interface fast Ethernet 5 for trunking with the R1 and R3 router gigabit inter Ethernet interface according to the topology diagram. This is the example. Configure the encapsulation in the mode. Okay, then no shutdown. In my case, I'm using Gigabit 1.1 on both devices. DLS1 interface Gigabit 1.1 switch port mode access uh, switch port trunk and cap solution dot one q switch port mode trunk no shutdown. DLS2 interface gigabit 11 switch port trunk encapsulation dot one q switch port mode trunk shut down down okay Configure R1 and R3 gigabit Ethernet interfaces for VLAN trunking. Create a subinterface for each VLAN. Enable each subinterface with the proper trunking protocol. And then configure it for a particular VLAN for, with the encapsulation code. Assign an IP address to each subinterface from the table on page 4. Page 4, uh, this is the example. Three VLANs three subinterfaces according to this table okay R1 R1 three belongs three subinterfaces and R3 three belongs three subinterfaces. R1 has the first IP and R3 has the second IP on all cases. Okay, R1 enable configure terminal and the interface connected to the switch is gigabit 01 gigabit 01 that 10 for subinterface number 10 encapsulation dot 1q 10 IP address 10 1 uh, 10 network and use the fruits subnet mask 24 and the description is uh, Office Bilanta. 
subinterface 20, encapsulation 20, network 20. If you type description server VLAN 20, subinterface 99. Encapsulation 99, Network 99, Description VLAN 99, Management, Access the physical interface, then no shutdown command. R3 the same the same way neighbor configure terminal interface gigabit zero uh, one dot ten encapsulation dot one q ten IP address ten one ten the second IP subnet mask description Office VLAN 10 20 20 20 Server 20 99 99 99 manage 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 me uh, 99 access the physical interface now shut down show IP interface brief on R1 to verify do show IP interface brief look at these three sub interfaces status app protocol app show belongs on R1 do show belongs space and uh, the VLAN number one by default VLAN 10 associated with this sub-interface with this IP address VLAN 20 and 99 configure one R3 gigabit interface Ethernet sub-interfaces for GLBP operation In this slide, you will configure a single GLBP group consisting of two members, R1 and R3. A GLBP group can have as many as four members. A single member will be elected as the ABG, and the routers will be designated as ABFs. And their virtual MAC address will be distributed to host by an ABG in response to the ARP request. ABG election is based on the high, highest LGBP priority, in this case of a tie, the highest assigned IP address is used. The LGBP GRP priority interface configuration command can be used to modify the priority from the default of 100 in order to influence the election of the ABG. Should the ABG lose its role, the backup router with the highest priority will assume the role. If you desire for the original ABG router to reassume its role once it comes back up, the LGBP uh, GRP preempt command must be configured. The ABF is responsible for forwarding packets that are sent to the virtual MAC address assigned to that gateway by the ABG. 
forward preemption is used with the IBFs and allows another IBF to assume responsibility for forwarding packets. For an IBF, the hash loss is rolled or being disconnected. While ABG preemption must be manually configured, IBF preemption is enabled by default. In this lab, R1 will act as ABG and ABF1 and R3 will act as ABF2. R1's GLBB priority will be modified to ensure its election as ABG. Okay, this is the example for subinterface number 10. Uh, GLBP group 10, the IP, the virtual IP 254, that will be the default gateway for that network, the priority 150 and preempt. The same configuration, but for subinterface number 20. The group 20. Also for 99 sub interface. R1 interface gigabit uh, 01 that time. GLBP group 10. The virtual IP. 10, 1, 10 to 54, GLBP priority 150 and preempt. Okay. The same for 20. Twenty twenty uh, twenty priority group twenty preempt group twenty sub interface ninety nine group ninety nine Network 99 Priority 99 Group Preempt 99 Okay, uh, verify do show running config Okay Okay, except for the priority command, the same commands are used on subinterfaces on R3. Okay, on R3, same configuration, but do not configure priority. R3, enable configure terminal. Interface gigabit zero one that ten LGBP uh, GLBP group ten IP ten one ten to fifty four and preempt for twenty. Preempt for ninety nine and preempt ready. Then verify show do show running config.
okay, the LG, LGBP configuration on all subinterfaces. Now go to R1, apply the following command again, we show GLBP. And on R3, also do show GLBP. Okay, the state is active. This is the ABG on R3. The state is standby. Preemption enabled on R1, on R3, preemption enabled. Active is the local, standby is 10, 1, 10, 2, R3. Priority 100 for the standby router R3. And on R3, the active is 10, 1, 10, 1. R1 with the priority of R1 150. Standby this is the local router. Priority 100 for the local router on R1 and waiting 100 by default. These are the default waiting thresholds used in the ABF operation of GLBP. Go to R3, the local priority 100, the waiting 100 by default. Okay, the, the, the default waiting thresholds used in the ABF operation of GLBP. Okay, there are two forwarders and one is the active. The forwarder number one is, is this, the active router, and uses this MAC address. 0A01 by default. The forwarder number two, the state is listened, and the MAC address is this, 0A02. Go to R3, two forwarders, one is the active, forwarder one is the local router, R3, state listened, this MAC 0A01. And the forwarder number two is the active router. The MAC address is 0A02. Okay, and look at this um, R1 is the forwarder number one. And the MAC address is 0A01. And R3 is the forwarder number 2. Okay, state active. This is the ABG. Preemption. The priority 150. This priority is to influence ABG selection, waiting 100. These are the default waiting thresholds used in the ABF operation of LGBP. Okay, there are two forwarders, R1 and R3, both are ABFs. Forwarder 1 and forwarder 2. Show LGBP brief. Okay, go to R1. Do show LGBP brief. 
Now you can see the subinterface, the group, the forwarding state, the priority, priority, the state, the virtual IP, the active router is the local, the standby router R3. The, the APFs on the subinterfaces for group 10 are two forwarders. Forwarder 1 and forwarder 2 for group 10. One is active and the another is listen. Okay. Okay. These are the ABFs. The active has the MAC address 0A01 in the listening 0A02. The active is the local ABF. In the listen, ABF is R3. The same case for all subinterfaces. R3 do show GLBP brief. Group 10, the priority 100. This is the standby router. The virtual IP, the active router is R1, the standby router is the local. These are the ABFs, group 10, for water 1 and for water 2. The first is in listening mode and the active for water number 2. The active ABF is the local and the listening ABF is the R1. Okay. Remember, this is on R3. Okay. But on R1, these two are the ABFs, the active ABF is the local with this MAC address 0A01. In the listen, listening uh, ABF is R3 with 0A02. Okay, on R3, the ABF active is the local with 0A02. And the listening is with the mic, is uh, R1 with the MAC address 0A01. The first line in the GLBP output shows the role of the ABG for group 10. The priority has been set to 150 for this group and the state shows R1 as the active ABG. The virtual IP 254, the standby ABG is 10.1.10.2, that is R3 router. The next two lines also pertain to GLBP group 10. This line is detailed information about the ABF. These are the two forwarders in this group. The virtual MAC addresses are 0A01 and 0A02. The first two hexadecimal characters 0A equal to 10 in decimal, which corresponds to the group number 10. The last two digits 01 correspond to one of the four MAC addresses. 0, 01 to 0, 04 that can be used in the GLBP operation. The second line in the GLBP output displays information about the ABF. Line 2 shows that R1 is listening or in standby ABF mode for the MAC address ending in 0, 01. Line 3 of the output shows that R1 is actively forwarding packets for the MAC address ending in 02 shown above. Okay, for example, on R1, if this is the active ABF, this will be used for forward to forward packets. And also on R, uh, 0A01. And also on R3, the active is the MAC address 0A02. 
which of all those that the forward and mark address uh, 63024 GLBP group 99 okay go to 99 and uh, the active is uh, in this case on our one six three zero one is the active but on our three the active is six three zero two okay uh, six three zero two on group ninety nine is r three One MAC address is the active forwarder for GLBP Group 99 listening. Okay. For R3, the listening is 6301. And for R1, the listening is 6302. Okay, on R3 is 63301. Uh, six, okay, on R3, the listening is this. And on R1 is 6302. On R1, listening 6302. Apply uh, configure the IP address on server one password Cisco by default. I have config to verify and I'm using Ethernet one so the Ethernet one IP address is this and subnet mask modify this sudo if config Ethernet one and set the IP address ten one ten one hundred password Cisco and subnet mask net mask twenty four Now verify I have config Ethernet one new IP and submit mask. Verify the default gateway IP route This is the default gateway for Ethernet Zero and for all the system, um, remove this and add the new default gateway. sudo ip root delete default via okay, delete this, remove this and add Add default via the new is ten one ten to fifty four. Verify IP root the default via on Ethernet one. Okay, the same process on PCB and PCC. Cisco sudo if config Ethernet one Cisco 
net mask IP root remove this sudo IP root delete default via and add PCC Cisco sudo IF config Ethernet one Cisco sudo IF config Ethernet one net mask IP root IP sudo IP root the let default not Okay. Now, from PCC verify pings to the default gateway. Pings the default gateway. Success. Verify the ARP table using the ARP option A command. Okay, this entry is for Ethernet 0 and also for Ethernet 0 this is another entry but I want to see the Ethernet 1 entry and look at this IP address 10.1.10.254 that is the default gateway I belong, and belongs to this MAC address 0A01 Okay, and verify on R1 enter enable show GLBP brief okay on VLAN 10 sub interface 10 the IP address 10 1 10 254 the virtual IP and the active ABF the first forwarder is 0A01 and the second forwarder is 0A02 Remember, 0A is 10 in decimal and 01 the first forward. Go to R3, enable show GLBP brief. Okay, VLAN 10, sub interface number 10, the ABG. And the virtual IP address 10.1.10.254 10, with the first forwarder in this case is listening on 0A01 and the second forwarder is the active or 0A02 go to PCC 
and it's using 0A01. Okay, access to PCB. Yes, uh, password Cisco. Pin the default gateway. Success. Control C to stop. Verify ARP table option A. And for Ethernet one. PCB is using 0A02. Go to PCC, uh, sorry, go to server. Yes, Cisco being the full gateway. Success. Control C to stop. ARP option A. In this case, this PC is uh, using 0A01. Okay, this is the load balancing. Some PCs are using 0A and 0A01. Um, server 1 and PCC are using 0A01 and PCB is using 0A02. Okay, from server 1, ping the default gateway. And on R1, shut down the gigabit 01. Go to R1, configure terminal interface gigabit 01. 01, shut down. Okay. The ping fails in, in a moment, but the ping now will uh, use the another default gateway. And now the ping will continue because we'll use the another forwarder. Okay, we'll use the ABF number two. Control C to stop, then verify AR, verify the ARP table. Zero A zero one, go to R3, show GLBP brief. For VLAN 10, subinterface 10, the first forwarder is the active 0A01, and the second forwarder also is the active on 0A02, because R1, gigabit 01 interface on R1 is shut down. Okay, but But the ping to the virtual IP 10.1.10.254 is still working. We go to R3. Go to R1 and gigabit 01. No, shut down. Okay, ping the the forget way again is working very well. Control C show uh, the ARP table. 
Okay, IP and MAC address. Configure R1, R2, and R3 serial interfaces and AIGR pull routing in autonomous system number one. For use GLPP interface tracking. Configure R1 serial interface and also EIGRP autonomous system one for 10.0.0 network. This is the example for R1. Configure the serial interface and apply EIGRP. Configure R2 serial interface and serial one, serial zero and serial one on R2 and R3 serial interface serial one using the addresses show in the topology diagram and configure EIGRP autonomous system number one for network 10. Then verify R1 go to R1 enter enable configure terminal and I'm not using serial interface here and I'm using gigabit 02 and also gigabit 01 okay verify do show running config okay gigabit 01 configured with sub interfaces and Gigabit 02 is still not configured. Okay, instead of using serial interface, I'm using Gigabit 02. This configure Gigabit 02. Okay, use the first IP here. Interface Gigabit 02 IP address 10110. Use the first submit mask theory to fifty two and shut down. Go to R two and configure gigabit zero two and gigabit zero one. R two enable configure terminal interface gigabit zero two IP address ten one one. Use the second IP. Second IP, submit mask theory. No shutdown. Gigabit 01, IP5, okay, IP5, on this subnet, 10115, uh, submit mask theory. Okay, Gigabit 01. Five ten one one five not shut down. Go to R three, enter, enable configure terminal interface gigabit zero two IP address six gigabit zero two IP address so one one six theory no shutdown. Okay, now configure EIGRP routing exit router EIGRP autonomous system one and show the directly connected networks to show IP route connect. Now, as you can see, this network is this, and this another networks for the subinterfaces. Okay, on gigabit zero one. So notify all, or simply apply the classful network
or notify all the subnetworks any that you want I prefer subnetworks and use the wildcard for few D is three Ten zero wildcard for twenty four is this twenty and ninety nine ready R two router EIGRP one do show IP route connected okay two networks connected M4 okay R1 router EIGRP1 do show IP route connected okay all this Ten, twenty, and ninety-nine. Then verify do show IP EIGRP networks. Okay, success. This is uh, R three. On the LAN, and this is R2. On R2, verify, do we show IP EIGRP networks? R1 and R3, and on R3, do we show IP EIGRP networks? R1 and R2. Very nice. Okay, and go to R2. And don't forget to configure loopback 0 on R2. And notify this on EIGRP. Go to R2, R2 router. Exit interface, loopback 0, IP address 10, 1. 202 one well, fuel d2 is this okay exit rather eigrp1 network 10 1 2, 2 1 and the white card for that mask is this ready and um, verify on r1 do show IP route now you can see the directly connected network to R2 this the network between R2 and R3 this directly connected networks on sub interfaces this and finally the connection to loopback zero on R2 this so that is very well configured on R3 do show IP route okay now you can see also the loopback zero configured on R2 very nice and now from R1 ping the loopback 0 on R2 and from R3 ping loopback 0 on R2 R1 do ping 10 1 2 0, 2 1 success R3 and ping 10 1 2 0, 2 that one success also from 
PCB ping loopback zero on R2. Password is Cisco ping ten one two oh two dot one. Success. Control C to stop. And ARP table. Okay, the virtual IP uses 0A02 MAC address. Okay. Okay, the configuration for PCA the, the, that is the server, this IP, this net mask, and this default gateway. Okay. Access the server, PCA. Cisco IF config IP submit mask IP route the default gateway okay very well configured okay for PCB for PCC uh, verify that PCA PCB and PCC ping the your default gateway And upon successful ping of the gateway, view the ARP cache on each PC using the ARP option A. Okay, ping the default gateway and verify the MAC address. Okay, for example, from PCA, the server, ping the default gateway. Success, Control C to stop, ARP option A. The default gateway, 0A001 in server 1. Okay, but also this is uh, R1, R1, with this, IP, this, this MAC address, and this is uh, R3 with this MAC address. But the default gateway is the virtual IP 254 with this MAC address 0A01. PCB. Cisco. Ping. Success. Control C to stop. ARP option A, okay. R3 with this MAC, virtual IP with 0A02. Okay, PCC. Yes, Cisco ping the full gateway. Success, Control C to stop. ARP option A. R1, this MAC address. Virtual IP 254 0A01. The output of the ARP cache reveals that 254 associated with GLBP virtual MAC address 0A02. The first address to be issued to the first client requests the 0A02 MAC address. The MAC address addresses and other output you receive will vary. The important thing to note is that each router is listening for one MAC address either ending in 01 or 02, and that the ABG alternate these MAC addresses in the ARP replies as part of the default round routing algorithm. Now move to PCB and ping the default gateway and verify ARP cache using the ARP option A command. What MAC address has been issued to the PCB client? Okay, PCB. 
Cisco being the full gateway success A R B option A zero two zero A zero two for two fifty four. Okay, should be zero A zero one or zero A zero two. Okay. Uh, PCC Cisco being the full gateway Control C to stop ARP option A for 254 0A01 is alternating I want show GLBP brief I want to show GLBP brief okay two for waters for network 10 first for water active 0A01 but go to R3 show GLBP um, brief for two for waters for network 10 for water 1 for water 2 but the active in this case is 0A02 the highlighted line above show GLBP brief output shows that R1 is the active for water for MAC address 0A02 Okay, in the standby for 0A01. Move, move to R3 and the highlighted line ab above the show GLBP brief output shows that R3 is the active forwarder for MAC 0A01. And the standby is 0A02. Okay. The GLBP behavior demonstrated is based on the GLP, GLBP, the full load blasting algorithm of round robin. This client sent ARP request to resolve the MAC address of the default gateway. The ABG reply to each client contained the MAC address of the next possible router in the round robin fashion. Load balancing options with GLBP are weighted, host dependent, and round robin default. The load balancing algorithm can be changed using the interface configuration command GLBP group load balancing and use a host department, the round robin, or weighted. Now, configure GLBP interface tracking. If serial interface on R1 goes down, client using R1 as ABF will not be able to reach the destination located of the R2 router. Similarly, R3 serial interface, if R3 serial interface goes down, client using R3 and ABF will not be able to reach the destination located of the R2 router. GLBP interface tracking uses a weighting mechanism which is different than HSRP or BRRP. With GLBP, two thresholds are defined. One lower threshold that applies when the router loses weight and one upper threshold that applies when the router regains weight. If the router priority or weight falls below the threshold, the router loses its active state. As soon as the router weight or priority exceeds the threshold, the router regains the, its active state. Because R1 serial interface and R3 serial 01 interface affect GLBP for warding operations, we will need to configure tracking on these interfaces. Tracking with GLBP uses objects. The first step to track the line protocol status of R1 serial interface on R1 issue the following command track 15 interface serial interface line protocol. R1 enter the subinterface configuration mode for VLAN 10 and then configure the weighting mechanism and associate it with the trap object number 15. Consider the example configuration below. 
this example. In the first command, RG gigabit, R1 gigabit 01 dot 10 is configured with GLBP weight of 100. In the first command, R1 gigabit 01 dot 10 is configured with GLBP weight of 110 and lower threshold of 85 and uh, upper threshold of 105. When the weight falls below the specified lower threshold, the R1 ABF is forced to relinquish its role for the active MAC address assigned to it. In the second command, GLBP weight, weighting is associated with the light protocol status of serial interface. If the light protocol state changes, the weight configured for 110 will be decreased by 30, resulting in a weight of 80. A weight of 80 causes the R1 router to fall below its lower threshold set to current list uh, 85. R1 would then lose the ABF role until the weight exceeds the upper defined threshold of 105. The weighting mechanism offers more flexibility with upper and lower thresholds defined over its counterparts HSRP and BRRP, which, is, which only allow a single threshold to be defined. Okay, first of all, from PCB, or, okay, access PCB, Cisco, ping, um, loopback 0, 10, 1, 2, 2, 1. Okay, ping, success. Okay, go to R1. And shut down gigabit 01. Shut down. Enter, go to PCB. And the ping is working very well. Enable gigabit zero one again, no shutdown. Ping is working very well. Go to R three. Shut down gigabit zero one. Ping is working very well and configure terminal interface gigabit zero one. Shut down. View uh, PCB. The ping is failing for a moment. Then, then now the ping will work very well again. Okay, and uh, zero one no shutdown. Control C to stop and apply tracking. On global configuration mode apply this track fifteen the interface and line protocol. For example, on R1, that's it, global configuration mode, track 15, interface, in my case, gigabit 02, line protocol. Okay, exit. And access subinterface gigabit zero one dot ten 
glbp group tank and configure the weighting. 100, the threshold, the upper uh, Okay, the the white team will be by default one hundred ten. The lower threshold will be eighty five, and the upper threshold will be one of five. And now, on group 10 of GLBP, the white team will use the track number 15, this track, to decrement on 30. Okay, 100 minus 15. In case of line protocol gigabit 02 will go down, will be 80. 110 minus 15 will be 80. A lower value than the lower threshold that is 85. But you can configure this also on R3. Let's see. Track 15, interface gigabit 02, line protocol dash, exit, and subinterface gigabit 01.10, and GLBP group 10. Waiting 110, lower threshold, upper threshold, and track 15, decrement 30. Ready. Go to PCB. Ping uh, loopback zero on R2 and shut down gigabit zero two on R1 and configure terminal interface gigabit zero two shut down. Okay, now track state line protocol from up to down. Okay. But the ping is working very well. Okay, look at this GLBP for wording state change. Gigabit 01.10 group 10 for wording one state from up from active to listen. We see that the trocket interface displayed the state change and then causes the GLBP state of ABF2 from an uh, Active to stay to listen. After GLBP state change occurs, notice the ping output from the PC. The ping should continue without fail. GLBP failover automatically to the R3 device and the client experiences it. No disruption in service. View the output of show GLBP command. Okay, go to R1. Do show GLBP. Okay. The weighting on group 10, okay, on group 10, the weighting, the weighting was configured to 110, but now it's 80. Okay, the lower threshold 85, upper 105, but now the weighting is 80. Okay, trap 
object 15 state down decrement in 30. 110 minus 30 is 80. And it's a lower value than the lower threshold of 85. Now the forwarder one is listening. And forwarder two also listening. Okay? Both listening. And go to R3 and show G L BP forwarder one on group ten, group ten, forwarder one active and forwarder two active. Okay, very nice. Control C to stop the feed, the ping on PCB. 246 packets transmitted and 246 received. 0% packet loss. The first part of the GLPP output deals with r role as an ABG. The ABG role has not been affected by the configuration we apply at above. The highlighted portion shows the impact of the interface tracking and waiting mechanism configuration. The waiting mechanism only affects the forwarder role in GLPP. Notice that R1 is no longer the forwarder for MAC address 0A02. R1 shows the forwarder roles for both MAC addresses in the listening state. It is important to note that similar configurations should be applied on R1 for a GLBP route 20 and 99 for consistency of operations. Also, in a real world scenario, R3 should need to be configured to track the serial interface and have the waiting mechanism applied as appropriate. To limit the length and time required to perform this lab, these steps have been omitted. Activate R1 serial interface with the NAS shutdown command. Activate Gigabit 02 on R1. Configure Gigabit 02, no shutdown. Then verify the with the show GLBP command for group number 10. The rating is now 110. Configure 110 thresholds the track and look at this for water one in listening and for water two also listening. Okay, verify again to show GLBP for water one listen for water two listen. Okay, verify again. Okay, but um, takes uh, a time and uh, for group ten for water one now is active. And for water two, listening. Go to R three. Show GLBP on group ten. For water one, listening. Good. For water two, active. Very nice. Configure GLBP authentication. GLBP authentication is important to ensure that no raw device is allowed. Join group, GLBP group, and adversely affect GLBP operations by initiating attacks such as mine in the middle at sea. GLBP supports two options for authentication, plain text and MD5. MD5 offers greater security than plain text. Using MD5 uh, coordinated secret key to generate the key MD5 hash, which is included in GLBP packets sent back and forth. A uh, key the hash of an incoming packet is generated, and if the hash within the incoming packet does not match the generated hash, the packet is, is ignored. Okay.
Power One configure this for each subinterface. Only one line command grbp group 10 authentication md5 key string and uh, password. Okay, configure also on R3 with the same password. And finally, verify operation. Okay, very simple. Go to a one. Enter uh, interface zero bit zero one dot ten GLBP group ten authentication MD five key string Cisco one two three go to twenty the same command will change the group and go to fill the uh, sorry go to 99 the same command but change the group okay obviously the communication will fail okay but configure this on R3 configure terminal Sorry, configure terminal. The first you go with zero one dot ten. GLBP group ten authentication. Uh, MD five key string Cisco one two three. Okay, GLBP. Uh, okay, is subinterface gigabit zero one dot ten no dash and apply the command glbp ten authentication md5 key stream. Okay, now is re established 20 the same command but apply on group 20. Okay, re-establish it. Finally, on group 99. So the interface 99, group 99 with the same comment. Re-establish it. Then verify if GLBP is working very well from PCB being loopbox here on R2. Okay, go to R1 interface gigabit zero two. Shut down the interface. Enter. The ping is working very well. Enable the interface. Now shut down, shut down gigabit zero one, shut down, gigabit zero one, shut down. And the ping is working very well. Enable gigabit zero one, no shut down. Go to R3 interface gigabit zero two shut down. Ping will fail in a moment. And the ping is re established. Now ping is working very well. Enable the interface, no shutdown. Gigabit zero one. Shut down. Gigabit zero one. Shut down. 
the pig will fail in a moment. And will be reestablished. Now it's working very well. Okay. Gigabit zero one, no shutdown. Very nice. It's working very well. Thank you very much.